Welcome back, Gems. Welcome back, Gems. I am the visionary and the founder of Gems for Christ Women's Ministry, Prophetess Monique Ray. I give honor to God, for God is just so awesome. He's so amazing. I give honor to my pastor, Apostle Melvin of Jordan. I give honor to each one of you. Thank you for joining Freedom Friday with Gems. My God, God has been having us on strongholds and dealing with the strong man and dealing with things that we need to deal with in this time to be free, free in our souls, free from bondage, free from the enemy's hands, free mentally, free spiritually, free emotionally, just free. My God. So I just thank God because it is more than just it being Freedom Friday, but it's about living a lifestyle of just being free in God. My God. So God is just so awesome, Gems. And there is absolutely none like him. And I just give him all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. And he's just so amazing. God is so He's so loving. He's so kind. He's so merciful. My God, um, God loves supersedes any and everything. And his mercy is just so phenomenal. His grace is so phenomenal. And we cannot make it in this world without God. We cannot do anything without God. We need God in every aspect and in every area of our lives to just be able to not just um, sustain, but to be able to just to survive. My God, we need God in every moment, in every situation. And we just thank God because he is just that kinds of God. He's that loving God. He's that loving daddy, my God, where he just loves on us. And we just thank God. So before we get started, we just going to open up with prayer because we just give honor to God and God, we just love you, God. And God, we just adore you, God. And God, we reverence you, God. And God, we realize, Father God, that we can do all things through Christ that strengthen us, God. We realize that our strength comes from you. Our hope comes from you. Our joy comes from you. Our peace comes from you. Everything that we do and we can accomplish, God, it comes from you and it's through you, God. So, God, we just thank you, Father God, for choosing, God, to utilize us, God, as your willing vessels, God, as your yielded vessels, God, for your glory, for your will. So, God, we just ask you, God, forgive us, God for all our sins. And God, we want to tell you, thank you, God. Thank you for another day of life, Father God. Another day, Father God, for assignments. Another day, God, for purpose. Another day, God, for destiny, God. Another day, God, just to give you glory, just to give you honor, just to worship you, God, to exhort your name, God. Father God, another day, Father God, to praise you, God, with the posture of our hearts, God, to praise you, God, with the fruits of our lips, Father God, to praise you, God, with our actions. Father God, another day, God, to represent God who you are, God, in this earth realm, Father God. Father God, another day, God, to spread your joy, to spread your peace, and to spread your love. Father God, another day, God, to embrace you, God, in your entirety. So, God, we just thank you, God. We thank you, Father God, God, for it's not our will, God, but God, we desire the will of God, the perfect will of God in every area, God, of our life so that you can get the glory, God, for it's not our glory, it's not our honor, but it is all about you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen, my God. So this week, gems, God has me on the spirit of unforgiveness. My God, we tackled about the strongholds and the strongmans and spirits. And we've talked about the, the strongman of bitterness and how the spirits that's attach, uh, um, attached to the strong man of bitterness is the spirit of heaviness, but also another spirit that is also associated with is also the spirit of unforgiveness and the spirit of resentfulness. My God. So here in the word of God, and I'm just going to read several scriptures for your hearing. And here in Ephesians 4 and 32, and it reads, and be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted, 
forgiving one another, even as God for Christ. In Matthew 6 and 14, it reads, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, you, my God, my God. And then I love this one, Second um, Chronicles 7 and 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and their lamb so father god we just thank god for the reading of his word so forgiveness forgiveness unforgiveness so let's talk about that spirit of unforgiveness okay unforgiveness can take root in one's mind and begin to spread into other areas of a person's life unforgiveness is sin and unforgiveness will separate you from God. And not only will unforgiveness separate you from God, but unforgiveness, it can hinder your worship. It can hinder your praise. It can hinder your prayer. It can hinder your growth. It can hinder your witnessing on behalf of God. Unforgiveness will open up other doors of evil spirits to be able to come into your life and to attack you. It will open up the doors of sickness. Unforgiveness will also hinder your blessings. Unforgiveness can also make you live an unhappy life. Unforgiveness is a spiritual poison it is the single most popular poison that the enemy uses against God's people. And it is one of the deadliest poison a person can take spiritually. It causes everything from mental depression to health problems such as cancer and arthritis. And when we think about poison, poison is something that that has influence. And when we think about influence, influence to have an effect on the character development behavior of someone or something. So when we think about how God lets us know in his word to trespass against us, even as God has forgiven us. The biggest problem that a lot of people run into, they always want God to forgive them of their sins. They always want God to forgive them of their faults, and they always want God to forgive them of their flaws. But the biggest problem that a lot of people run into is extending forgiveness to other people. Mm -hmm. And the word of God lets us know that when we don't forgive, it hinders us. It stops our growth. The word of God also lets us know that when we don't forgive, God is really not hearing us. And it amazes me that how so many people can walk around with unforgiveness in their hearts towards their brothers, towards their sisters, but yet they claim that God is still blessing them when it's contrary to what the word of God says. When you walk in unforgiveness, that is sin. And Satan does bless his people. He does. And it's so important and it's so vital to understand where your blessings are coming from. Are your blessings coming from God? Are all your blessings coming from Satan? And it's so important to always, always want your blessings to always come from God, first and foremost. And in order to for that to happen and to achieve that, then we must posture in God where we're able to receive from God. Posture 
um, from God where we are, our spirits are open up to be able to take in and be able to transform into who God created us to be. A lot of times as people, when we go through different hardships or we go through different situations or we deal with different types of relationships, that there will always be some sort of offense. Mm -hmm. Offense. But what's important is when the offense occurs, that all parties come together to work on dis, 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 to work on um, dismantling the offense. And when all parties come together on one accord to work through whatever defense or work through whatever issues there is, then it's very easy for forgiveness to come in and take root and begin to grow in everyone's lives. But a lot of times what happens is people, a lot of people will turn to God and ask God to forgive them of their sins. And then they will turn to God and ask God to forgive them of any offense that they may have caused their brothers or their sisters. But what they don't do, they don't go back and fix it with their brothers and their sisters. And it's so important that when we are all believers of God and we're serving the same God, we're serving Yahweh, we're serving, serving Jehovah, the rule applies for each one of us. There is not a set of different rules for one person and then another set of rules for another person. But what happens is when we stop ourselves is when we don't walk in the principles, in the biblical principles of God. When we don't operate in the biblical principles of God. It is so important that a lot of things amongst people can be resolved just by our conversation. Just by a conversation. A lot of people stand and make the stance on having to live with an apology you never may re receive. And the thing about it is, if there has been an offense, then when all parties come to the table and work through the offense, then the apology can occur and the apology can happen. But it's when some people decide, I'm not going to apologize. I worked it out with God. It's great that we work it out with God. We are supposed to work it out with God. We are supposed to go to God and lay it all out on the table because we are his children. And the thing about it is God knows each one of us. So yes, that is exactly what we're supposed to do. But in order to live peacefully amongst our brethren, then we have to go back and we have to fix that. It's called accountability. And a lot of people don't like to be accountable because it's like, oh boy, here we go again. Oh boy, we still on that. Oh boy. He didn't get over that. Oh boy, she didn't get over that. Oh brother, he didn't let that go. Oh brother, she didn't let that go. God meets each one of us at our needs. And where somebody else may be in their walk with God, someone else can be somewhere totally different. Does it mean that their walk is wrong? No. That just means that everyone is in their walk with God because every one of us should have a level of intimacy with God. And God meets each one of us at our needs. But what I love about 2 Chronicles 7 and 14 
It says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. You may say, prophetess, why would you use that particular scripture? I use that particular scripture because there's a key in it. It says, shall humble themselves. A lot of times, a lot of people don't like to humble themselves enough to say, I'm sorry. Because of pride. Pride can hinder so many different things. And we're going to dive into that at a later time about that spirit of pride. But a lot of times, a lot of people do not like to humble themselves to give it an apology. But they want someone else to humble themselves to extend the apology. How is it that we as people... We want to be able to receive it, but not extend it. And the truth of the matter is, as people, you know if there was an offense. You know if something occurred between you. And as people, it's time out of going and talking about it to other people and not talking about it with the person that's involved. I'm going to say that again. As people, it's time out from going and talking about it with other people as opposed to talking about it with the person that's involved. Because that's how things linger. That's how unforgiveness linger. That's how the offense linger. That's how the resentment linger. That's how the heaviness linger. That's how the bitterness. That is how all of these things linger because there's no conversation. It's like a parent. I'm a parent of two boys. And when they get into their um, spats and their arguments and their disagreements, sometimes I'll sit back and I'll let them work it out. But then after they walked around for a, a, a long period of time with an attitude, then that's when I interject. And it's like, okay, what you're not going to do is you're not going to walk around here with an attitude because you guys are brothers. So you guys are going to come together and you guys are going to talk and you guys are going to work this thing out. And you guys are going to say sorry to each other. And then you're going to move on and play your PS4 station or whatever it is, or go outside and play basketball or whatever it is that you're going to do. But you're going to work this thing out. How do you think God feels as our parents? That when he knows that an offense have occurred between all of his children and that we will go to him to work it out, but yet won't go to each other. And then as it harbors, it becomes a poisonous, poison in your spirit. It becomes destructive. It becomes corrupting. And it influence you. And it has the capability of um, affecting your character, your behavior, and your development. Now is the time that God wants all of his children to be free. Free in him. Free from the bondage of the enemy. The only one who wins when unforgiveness is Satan. 
as long as he can keep something going on between the brethren, he wins. As long as he can keep in forgiveness and individual lives, he wins. Now, don't misunderstand me. If a person continues to do the same offense over and over and over again, yes, you and we are supposed to forgive them over and over and over and over again. But then there comes a time that if a person refuses to change their behavior or their character, then it comes a time that when we as people have to fall back and give people a space to work out whatever it is that they need to work out. And if everyone is working it out God's way, then eventually God can bring things back together where healing can take place and forgiveness can take place. But in the process of falling back, that does not mean don't forgive. No, 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 no. We should always keep a heart of forgiveness because we always want God to keep his heart open to forgive us because we are not perfect. We are imperfect people, but we are loved by a perfect God. And God loves us in the midst of our imperfections. There are things that we have done that have offended God, but God has forgiven us because he is just that loving and he is just that forgiving. But forgiveness is not something that is spoken, but it is something that's given and it's something that's done. A lot of people will say, I forgive you with their mouths, but their actions remain the same. That is not forgiveness. If you're saying, I forgive you, or you're asking somebody for forgiveness, and your actions remain the same, that's not true forgiveness. Now is the time to be free. Whatever is going on in your lives, whatever have offended you, whoever have offended you, whoever you have offended, ask God to forgive you and you go back and work it out with your brother and with your sisters. And you trust God in your process. And you trust God to lead you. Do not let the enemy rob you of your joy, of your peace, of your love, of your happiness, of your prayers, of your growth, of your witnessing. Do not let the enemy rob you of what God has for you. Because God has some amazing things for you. Just for you. Because what God has for you, it's for you. And he has some awesome things for you. Walk in forgiveness. Live in forgiveness. Because God did it for each one of us. I don't want to take for granted that everyone have a relationship with God. If you don't, after hearing this message on today, and you decided that you want to, all you have to do is repent in your heart. Repent. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was risen from the dead and you shall be saved. It's not hard, it's not complex, it is quite simple. Know that God has an assignment just for your lives. Know that God has purpose and destiny just for your lives. Know that God loves you. And know that this is the beginning of your newness in Christ. Walk in your newness in Christ. 
walk and live in forgiveness. Because guess what? After you just said that, God has forgiven you of your sins. That's just that simple. <laughs> now trust God in everything you do. I would love to hear your testimony. You can reach out to me via Facebook at Gems for Christ Timeline. You can inbox me on Facebook, Monique Elvey. You can come down to the physical church building. We're located at 51 Tapscott Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11212. Echo Senior Ministries Worship Center. Again, where my pastor is, Apostle Reverend of Jordan. Thank you again for joining Gems. Freedom Friday with Gems. Again. Prophetess Monique Vey. I'm the visionary and the founder. Know that God loves you. I'm so excited about what God is doing in your life, through you, and in you. Continue to grow in the things of God. Don't let the enemy rob you of what God has for you. Don't let you rob you of what God has for you. Don't let anyone rob you of what God has for you. Everyone, enjoy your day and be blessed.